Hi, it's Ant here again uh, with another screencast. This time we're recapping what we did in week two of MC410. And we're just going to create some simple beats using Boom, which is the drum machine plugin that comes with Pro Tools and uh, direct entry of notes rather than playing them in on keyboard or pads. Okay, so uh, as I said in the previous screencast, if we go File, New Session, okay, we see this, which is a slightly cut down version of that quick start window. And so we're going to select 24 bit audio, broadcast wave format, and sample rate 44.1 kilohertz, and IO settings, stereo mix, okay. And now I'm going to uh, create the session. So this is the folder where I want it to be. So I'm just going to type the name, week two. I'm going to call it Simple Beats. Okay. So here we are with the blank uh, session window. So this is the edit window. Okay. There are two main windows in Pro Tools, the edit window and the mix window. And to flip between them, we can use the shortcut Command and Equals. Okay. So if we use that, that will flip between the two. Okay, you can also use the window menu to select which one you want to look at, but it's going to be much quicker if you, uh, you learn to use the shortcut. So command and equals is probably the shortcut you'll, you will use most in Pro Tools. Now, there's a few things we need to do to be able to see everything that we need to be able to work in, in MIDI in this way. Okay, the first thing we need is to see everything in the transport. So this is up here. We're seeing some of it already. Okay. Um, if we go to this, this uh, triangle here, we can drop down this menu and what we want to do is click on all and then also for safety, I would say click on expanded transport and that's just going to show us everything that we can see up there. Okay, the stuff there that we're not going to need yet, but it's just good to know that everything is, is going to be visible. Okay, um, now. The next thing we need to do is we need to be sure that we're working with the main ruler of the session set to bars and beats. Now at the moment you see the clock here just says zero. That's because we're in samples. Okay. Now we're, we're almost never going to use samples mode. That's something that you, you would use often in film. Uh, but we're only ever really going to need to be in bars and beats. Now at the moment I can't see bars and beats. So what I do is this little symbol here, if I click to drop down this menu, I can choose from all of these rulers. Okay. So if I click on bars and beats, that brings that one up. And if I click again to select it, that becomes the main ruler. And you see the clock changes to bars and beats. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off uh, samples because we don't need that. So I drop that down again there. And then I click on samples to turn that off. Okay. So now we're in bars and beats mode. Now the next thing we want to do is um, we want to unlink the timeline from the edit selection. That might sound complicated. What that means is um, when I make selections in the, the bars and beats ruler at the top, okay, um, as you can see when I select it you can see the lines come down into the the edit window itself. So if I have tracks, whenever I make selections up there, it's going to select tracks in the edit window as well. But we actually, for this mode, we want to separate that so we can set a loop and then just leave it while we work on our MIDI. Okay. To do that, we need to click this button here. Okay. And if I hover the mouse over it, it will come up link timeline and edit selection. So I'm going to turn that off. Okay. The next thing is we need to be working in grid mode. At the moment, I'm in slip, which means that whenever I do anything, it doesn't snap to the grid. Okay, so uh, whatever grid we have set, while slip mode is on, that doesn't matter. Any notes I put in or any editing I do will will happen regardless of the grid. So we want to switch to grid mode there. Okay, uh, and we probably want to set our grid to 16th notes, which is usually useful for programming drums. So if we go up here where it says grid, this where the word grid is kind of lit up in green there, that turns the grid on and off. Okay. 
and then this value here sets the grid. So at the moment it's set to quarter notes. I'm going to go down to 16th notes. So now we've got a grid of 16th notes. Okay, um, let's make a track so we can have our drum machine on a track. So if we go to track, new. So this is our new tracks dialog. Um, this just tells us how many how many tracks of this kind that we're going to specify we want to create. We could choose mono or stereo. In this case, we want stereo. We could choose what kind of track. In this instance, we want an instrument track. And that flicks to ticks. That is what we want. We will. I will explain in a later video and in a later lecture what that means. Uh, but ticks is what we want. And then we just hit create. So now we have our instrument track here ready to go. Okay. So I've just dragged that down to enlarge it a little bit. So at the moment, we're zoomed quite a long way out because if you look, I mean, just up to there, that's like 32 bars by the time you get there. So that is a very long uh, selection. So I want to zoom in. Now there's two, well, there's actually more than two ways of doing it, but two main ways is this area here is to do with the zooming. Okay. And these arrows on the left and right do the horizontal zoom in. So if I click on that one, that zooms us in. Okay, so you see we get closer and closer in on the grid and this one goes out. But there is also a shortcut as well. Uh, so if I press return, this is another useful thing to learn. Whenever you press return, um, you will go back to the beginning of the session. Okay, your cursor will go back to the beginning of the session. And I'm going to use command and the right square bracket. And every time I press that, it will zoom in. Okay. And I hit return again, and that takes me back to the start. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. Okay, so now I can see that's two bars. So from the beginning there up to there, that's two bars. Okay, and I want that two bars to loop around. So I'm going to take my mouse up there at the top on the bars ruler and click and drag till I get to there. Remember, the origin of bars, like the beginning of bars, is one. So if we want two bars, we have to drag it up to three. Okay, that's always a little thing worth remembering. Uh, so what we're going to do now is make a clip that we can start working with. And uh, the, the quickest way of doing this is to put the track into record, okay? And then just record a small section. So if I click on record and then play, and then stop, okay? I've now got my MIDI clip there to play with. Uh, now, if I want to edit that, I can double click on it and it brings up this MIDI window, okay? Which is a floating window, this is, this is separate. But I'm gonna close that because also we can come down here, click on this button here, which sort of flips up a, a docked MIDI window. And if you go there, click and drag, you can kind of make that bigger, okay? Now, um, be aware that, you know, you can zoom this one just like you can zoom that, and it is actually separate. Also, our tools, which are what we're going to be using for manipulating the notes, so that's here in the edit window. There's also a separate set of tools in the MIDI window, okay? So, uh, what I'm going to do is let's come down here. I'm just going to click it. I've just clicked in that MIDI window there, and I'm going to use that command and the right square bracket shortcut to zoom in again. There we go. That's uh, yeah, that's about right. So I now need to flip over to the mixer, and these are my inserts on my mixer track. So this is where I would put plugins or instruments. Okay, because this is an instrument track, the first thing I want to put in is an instrument. So I drop down that first one, go to multi-channel plugin because we want it to be stereo. Come across here, down to instrument, and find boom. So this is Boom. This is the drum machine that comes with Pro Tools. Now, this has a lot of other features which we're not going to explore now, but we will be coming to soon. Um, for this video, I'm going to change the drum kit we use, which is here. I'm going to drop that down and select 80, which is like the Roland 808. Very familiar sounds. Okay. 
And now I've done that, I'm just going to close that window because we're not going to need to manipulate that at all. Uh, so if we go back using that command and equals shortcut once again, if we go back to uh, the edit window with the docked MIDI editor, okay, I'm going to take that track out of record. Okay. And if I go down to the MIDI editor, uh, general MIDI dictates that um, the general MIDI standard dictates that drums start at C1. So the kick drum is C1 on the keyboard. So here, if you look, we're seeing C3, which is middle C. So if you put the mouse in here and scroll down, so there's C2 and there's C1. So every time I click on that key there, we can hear it. And there's the snare. There's another snare there. Toms. And on the black keys, you get different sounds. Okay. Um, so this is our two bars highlighted. So I'm just going to start by putting a kick drum there. So it's playing round. So now that is looping round, okay? So I'm just going to put some kick drums on the on the uh, on the beats. Okay? So there's four in each bar. Okay? And then on the alternate beats, I'm going to put a snare drum. Okay, and I'm double clicking each time to create one of these notes. If you double click on it again, it will go. Now be aware that I am using the smart tool. Okay, so you see these three tools are selected together. To get that, so if, you, if you're if you seeing it's with one selected like that, this area around it that surrounds it, if you click on that, then you get the smart tool. And the smart tool, that will become apparent why we use that as we go through the, the uh, seminars. Uh, basically what it means is where you put the cursor means the tool changes. It's context governed, okay? So if I put it there, it changes to that tool for resizing. Okay, if I put it there, that's like the, the hand for moving stuff around. Okay. Okay, so, you know, I can just move stuff around like that. So now we've just got the most simple kind of, you know, four to the floor beat there. Now, if we look up on this black key here, that's that's a closed hi-hat. So, so we can kind of, you know, put this pattern in. And if you want, what you can do is with the crosshairs like that, if you select them all, put the cursor so you get the finger like that, hold down Alt, click, and drag. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, that's about as simple a beat as you could get, but in just a few minutes we've kind of got you know got ourselves a little beat going using the sounds from Boom. Okay, so let's uh, call it a day at this point and uh, join me next week for another screencast. Uh, recapping what we do in week three. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.